So we're out here again with our W123 Mercedes. It has the OM617 engine. And we're gonna be talking about something that is crucial for proper performance of this engine and really any mechanically injected diesel. It's gonna be similar to this. So what we're gonna be testing is the fuel pressure. That's gonna test two components on this engine, the lift pump, and the overflow valve. Now the overflow valve is a semblance of a pressure regulator. It has a little ball and a spring in there. If that spring compresses over years of fatigue, it won't hold the pressure inside the injection pump enough to fill the injector elements quickly enough at higher RPMs. And if it compresses enough, it could even affect starting idle performance just over the whole board poorer performance. So let's take a look at where these components are and how we're going to test them in one fell swoop. So looking at our engine from the driver's side, the left hand side of the car, you have the injection pump right here. The lift pump is down here. The primer pump is this little black push button on the side. Fuel comes in the back, out the front, into the secondary filter on the back of the injection pump. So in between the injection pump and the engine block. This little banjo bolt right here on the back of the injection pump. So between the pump and the engine block, this banjo bolt is the overflow valve. This is what regulates the pressure. So to test both of these things, we're going to tap into this port, the outlet port of the secondary filter, the frontmost port which comes and runs down to the injector pump right here. So this is the inlet of the IP, the outlet of the secondary filter. That's gonna test our internal pressure on the low pressure side of the injector pump. So what we need to do that is a tapped banjo bolt. Um, you can buy them online easily. There will be a link in the description to one of these. They're a M12 by 1.5 thread, or you can take and center punch the end of one of these, drill a hole in it, tap it to eighth inch NPT, and plug in a pressure gauge of some sort. Anything that'll read about zero to 30 PSI will work perfect for this. So let's pop this out and take a look at the pressure with a stock secondary filter. And then after we do that, we will look at with a two micron filter mod. So I'll pop you on a tripod and we'll get started. So you're going to need a 17 millimeter wrench to pop this fitting loose. And if it's a ratcheting wrench, it'll make your life a lot easier. So we've pulled this banjo bolt off and got both of our aluminum crush washers there. So we can install So we can install this one now, which has this fitting tapped into the end of it. So we'll pull our crush washer off, put that right back on. There we go. For now that we've got our modified banjo bolt tightened in, we're going to connect our fuel pressure test gauge. You could use any gauge. I just have a uh, actual fuel pressure tester, so I'll use that. Then we'll pump our primer pump. There we go, get that primed up. So any air is out of the system. Now we will tuck this hose out of the way so that it doesn't get caught in the belt. And we will go start the car up and see what kind of fuel pressure we got. As you just saw, we were around 15 to 25 PSI. It bounced around a bit, but that's because the piston-driven lift pump, so 
the pulsations as each stroke of that pump makes the gauge bounce. You could get a liquid filled gauge to prevent that, but this one just works and it, it tells us what we need to know. If we had seen it down around 10 PSI or below, then that's pretty low. It's going to have a hard time filling the elements quickly enough uh, at a low pressure below 10 PSI. So we want to see at least 10 and I wouldn't think much more than 30 PSI. Um, I don't know the actual spec. I think the actual spec is like 17 on these. So we're right in that range, which tells us that the lift pump and the overflow valve are healthy on this car. The lift pump, I would say, is probably a bit more rare to fail than the overflow valve. So we're going to cut in a little bit of uh, footage now from taking apart an overflow valve so you can see how it is, how it works. And as far as getting it off, it's the same 17 millimeter as all the other banjo bolts, more or less. Um, just unscrew it and watch out for the uh, crush washers falling out of the way. So once you've pulled your overflow valve out, this is what you're going to end up with. Now you've got two crush washers that would be on either side of the banjo fitting. Pull those off, you'll need a 17 millimeter and a 14 millimeter wrench to break this outside uh, nut loose. Now, some of these overflow valves don't have this second nut here. They're non-serviceable. Um, they tended to be on the uh, newer uh, cars, uh, tended to have the non-serviceable one, whereas the older ones had uh, this style where you could unscrew and then be careful because there's a spring there and a little copper crush washer. So set that aside and there's your spring and there's the ball. So essentially there's a seat down inside of here that this spring pushes this ball into and then the whole thing goes together essentially like that with these on either side of the banjo fitting. <clears throat> now the problem that happens is over years of use, I mean some of these cars are approaching 40 or more years old now, so the spring will collapse. And when it's weaker, because uh, it's in its uh, collapsed state, it holds less pressure on that ball, which means you'll have less fuel pressure that will stay inside of the injector pump. So what we can do, uh, you could use a ruler or anything for this, but I happen to have a um, digital caliper that measures in millimeters. And so what we're looking for is for this spring free length to be about 27 millimeters. As you can see, this one is only 24.82, which is actually pretty good. Um, I've seen some of these that have shrunk down to where they're barely 10 millimeters long. They're just completely collapsed like that. Um, and at that point, you're going to lose a ton of fuel pressure, which is going to give you real problems when it comes to performance. So we want to stretch this spring out to somewhere between 27 and 30 millimeters. So that's our 30 millimeters. So kind of gently grab it and pull it. And of course, it's not going to be perfect um, because once a spring has lost its sprawling. So we're right there, we're 28.88 millimeters approximately. Um, let's see if the camera can pick that up. I don't know if it'll even show up, but. So after you've stretched this spring out, um, obviously stretching it is not the ideal solution, but I've heard of many who have gotten thousands more miles of improved performance after stretching their spring. So after you've done that, take your banjo fitting, drop your ball bearing down inside, set your spring down in there, then your copper washer and the cap go together like that, set that over the spring, squeeze it together, and then use your 17 millimeter and your 14 millimeter respectively 
to put this back together, tighten it up, put it back in the car, and recheck your fuel pressure. And I guarantee you it will improve the fuel pressure, which should also hopefully improve your performance. Now, if for some reason the fuel pressure doesn't increase after doing this, there's a possibility that your lift pump is failing. And for that, we'll have to get into another video because that's a little more involved than this. So hopefully this was helpful to you and uh, we'll cut back to the rest of the video. Now let's put our two micron filter on and see how much that drops our fuel pressure. All right. So I would say that is basically no restriction. It seems just about the same pressures and the car runs fantastic. So that is not saying though that this filter may not plug up faster because it is such a dramatic amount finer being two micron instead of like the 10 ish that the stock one is rated at. So this is filtering a lot finer so it could pick up a lot more garbage and plug up faster. But at that point, it's the same deal. Change it out and maybe try to avoid getting diesel at places that tends to be contaminated. So basically, that proves the point that the 2 micron mod is not really... doesn't really have a downside, I guess would be a good way to put it. Um, you're getting better filtration, uh, water separating, and it's not dropping your fuel pressure. At least when it's not plugged. So the same as the, so the so that's the same as the stock secondary filter. If it's plugged, it's going to restrict your fuel pressure. We've got big stuff coming for this car. Stay tuned, stick around, and you'll get to learn about some really interesting stuff. Thanks for watching.